To begin data analysis of your ECG file, turn to the data analysis section of the ECG lab procedures provided in lab. The first step in the instructions is to get a computer with the free BSL application. To open a Save Biopack file, you must first place your ECG file on the computer you are working on. If your ECG file was emailed to you, open your email and download the ECG file you'll be analyzing. Do not try to open the attachment directly from your email. Biopack files can only be opened through the BSL application. If your ECG file is on a USB drive, plug it into the computer. Following the data analysis instructions in the ECG lab procedures, now open the BSL application. Select Analyze Your Own Data at the top of the window that opens and open a lesson data file for analysis at the bottom, and then click OK. In the next window that opens, select the location where the ECG file was saved to or downloaded. If saved to a flash drive, locate the flash drive on the left side column and select the lesson file. If using an MC computer, the flash drive would appear as the D drive. If you've downloaded your file from your email, select the Downloads folder on the left side column and select your file. If you get to this point, however, and see your file, but are unable to select it, this is generally due to a change in the file extension done by the server. Follow the steps detailed to correct this issue and open your file. Either way, the ECG Lab file will then open with all of the ECG Lab experiments recorded in full view. The black vertical lines running down the length of the ECG recordings act as dividers separating each condition recorded. At the top of each line is a black diamond event marker. When this diamond is selected, it will turn red, indicating it is selected and the recording condition that begins to the right of that line is shown in the top text box. In this example, the seated condition is seen in the top text box when its diamond divider is selected. If you click the next diamond marker, deep breathing will appear in the text box followed by arrowhead markers that either represent the start of inhale or the start of exhale. These dividers and titles ensure that you know what condition you're looking at. If your ECG was recorded correctly, you should have four sections visible on your screen. The left and right event arrows on the far right of the screen are useful in jumping back and forth between these event markers. In this example, we'll use the left event arrow to move back to the supine event marker. If any portion of your ECG recording strip or heart rate recording strip are cut off from view, select Display from the top menu and then auto scale waveforms from the menu list. This will bring everything into clear view. Scroll down to the bottom half of the screen to the journal section. Make sure journal is selected and then scroll down until you see table 5.2. For this table, you will be highlighting three individual cardiac cycles inside of each condition recorded and then calculating their mean value using the software. In order to do this, you have to first zoom into portions of each recorded condition so that you can properly highlight cardiac cycles. To zoom in, select the magnifying glass on the right toolbar. Bring it over to the first recording section, which is where 20 seconds of the supine condition was recorded. Bring the magnifying tool to the far top left corner of the ECG recording strip. Hold down the left click of your mouse or touchpad and keep the left click down as you move the magnifier toward the bottom right corner of the supine recording. In this example, the left click is released to zoom. If this occurs and you've zoomed in too much, select display from the top menu bar and then zoom back. In some instances, you may need to select this several times before you're back at the full screen view. Once there, again, hold down the left click at the top left of the recording section and drag the magnifier to the bottom right, selecting about a third of the entire supine recording. A temporary box will form indicating the section being magnified. When the left click is released, the ECG and heart rate strips will then be zoomed into. Now select the iBeam tool on the far right and bring it over the ECG recording. You must skip the first two seconds of any recording condition as the heart rate is always initially set at zero and will give you a false reading if highlighted. Following that tip, bring your iBeam tool over the middle of an RP. Pull down the left click and drag the iBeam to the middle of the next RP, always highlighting from left to right and then release the left click. One complete cardiac cycle is now highlighted. To insert the heart rate value for this cycle in table 5.2, place your cursor inside the table under the cycle one column in the supine row. Right click where you want to insert the value and select insert single measurement value from the menu list that appears. 
If this list doesn't appear, it is because you are not right-clicking inside the table. Additionally, Mac users may have to do a two or three finger right-click on their touchpad to showcase this menu. A Biopack student lab window will then open asking what measurement to insert. Select the measurement indicated at the top of the table. For table 5.2, you will always select channel 40 value from the list. The heart rate for the cardiac cycle highlighted will then appear in the first column of the supine row in table 5.2. If you insert it in the wrong location in the table, you can hit Ctrl Z to undo the insert. If a negative value appears in the table, this is due to you highlighting from right to left instead of left to right, and you'll have to redo the highlight. Now highlight a second cardiac cycle inside the supine ECG reporting section. You may select consecutive cycles near the beginning or scroll through the supine ECG strip to select other cycles. Just be sure to stay inside the first 20 seconds of the seconds bar, which is where the supine reporting is. Once again, highlight from R peak to R peak from left to right as previously done. Right click in the second column of the supine row. Select insert single measurement value from the menu. Select channel 40 value from the window that opens. Then repeat the same steps for a third cardiac cycle. When all three cardiac cycles are inserted in the supine row of table 5.2, then right click under the mean column for supine and select row statistics and then mean from the submenu that appears. Be sure not to highlight column statistics as the submenu is identical. With the supine row now complete, select the right event arrow on the far right of the screen. This will jump you to the next vertical divider. Make sure that the diamond event marker above this line is red and that the top text box indicates the seated condition. Use the horizontal scroll bar in the middle of the screen to bring the beginning of the recording condition into better view. Once there, select display and then auto scale waveforms to ensure the best view of the recording strokes. Once again, skip the first two seconds of the recording when the heart rate is set to zero. And then using the eye beam tool, highlight a cardiac cycle from the middle of one R peak to the middle of the next R peak holding down the left click. Then right click under cycle one for the seated row in table 5.2, select insert single measurement value, and select channel 40 value from the window that opens. For the second and third cycles within the seated condition, it is recommended that you select cycles near the beginning of the recording. In this example, you will highlight three consecutive cycles following the same steps to insert their heart rate and mean values in the table. With the seated condition complete, select the right event arrow on the far right of the screen to jump to the beginning of the deep breathing condition. Once there, select the horizontal scroll bar and drag it to the right to bring the recording section into better view. This recording condition has arrowhead markers inserted. You may click these individual arrowheads or click the right of an arrow to jump to the first arrowhead marker inserted, which should be a start of inhale marker. There should be three start of inhale sections and three start of exhale sections. Just as before, you will need to highlight three individual cardiac cycles inside any of the start of inhale sections. In this example, we are highlighting three cycles inside of one inhale section, but you may select cardiac cycles from another inhale. The area from this arrowhead to the next arrowhead represents a period of inhalation. When the start of the inhale row is complete, select the right or left event arrow to jump to a start of exhale recording section. Highlight three individual cardiac cycles inside any of the start of exhale sections from left to right in the same manner as before. Be sure to keep the red start of exhale arrowhead in view to ensure you are selecting cycles inside of the correct section of the recording strip. When the start of exhale row is complete, click the right event arrow until the after exercise event marker and dividing line is visible and listed in the top text box. If any portion of the ECG recording strip is cut off from view, select display and then auto scale waveforms from the menu list to improve the view. Highlight and insert values for three cardiac cycles inside the after exercise recording section. In this example, three cycles near the beginning are selected but you may select three from anywhere inside the 60 seconds of the recording. When table 5.2 is complete, you can transfer values by hand to the ECG post lab data tables in your must notebook. 
You can then complete the ECG post-op questions that are in your Must Notebook or app manual. Do not answer the questions at the bottom of the journal section in the application as these questions have since been modified and the most recent updates are in your Must Notebook. When you are ready to save your data, first zoom back by selecting display and zoom back until you are back at the full reporting view. Then select file from the top menu and save as from the menu list. In the window that opens, select a location to save your file to. Ideally, you would select the same location from which you open the file, such as the downloads folder, the desktop, or your USB drive. If you select the same location, a window asking you if you'd like to overwrite the existing file will open. Select Replace. If this window does not appear, then you did not select the same location and will have two separate files as a result, one with the data tables completed and one without. To then exit out of the application, select BSL Analysis and then quit to close out the program.